Alright, hello citizens of the Nigerverse. Hey, it's Nigerverse here once again, and this is going to be another movie review. So, well, today we conclude the original Spider-Man trilogy. So, oh, uh, oh, this time around, uh, we've got some new foes, foes, and some new problems in Peter's life. But, uh, most importantly of all, the meme potential within not just uh, this movie, but throughout the Spider-Man trilogy as a whole, has kicked into full maximum overdrive, or as you, uh, as you, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom fans, as you're just Marvel vs. Capcom fans, may say, Maximum Spider. I'm, of course, talking about Spider Man 3. So, as always, I'm not a professional, not a professional movie reviewer or movie analyst, just a man who enjoys a good time, which I had for the most part. Alright, um, alright, uh, it's interesting because within this trilogy, we go from one extreme to the other. A lot of people regarded Spider-Man 2 as the best in the trilogy. Meanwhile, oh, a lot, uh, a lot of people regard this one as the worst in the trilogy. Now, do I think this is the weakest in the trilogy? Honestly, yeah. yeah. Does that necessarily make it a bad movie? Not really. Yeah, yeah. Let, just like most movies, there are plenty of things that go right with this movie and plenty of things that go wrong with this movie. And there, and it does have potential well, as to being a good movie. But uh, the thing is, is and um, well, actually, we'll get more into it. So, uh, for those of you who have seen these reviews mine before, you kind of already know how this works. Uh, for those of you who haven't, going to be talking about what I liked and what I disliked about the movie. So, starting with what I liked. Uh, Hey, um, hey, uh, maintaining a, a, a decent deal of that Spider-Man charm um, that's been persistent uh, throughout the Spider-Man trilogy, he, uh, he uh, is kind of replicated here. Your Spider-Man has the same aim, uh, wall, wall crawling in, uh, in symbol of justice as he always is. Uh, going through some changes here, or, uh, though, oh, as he once again kind of explores himself, but this time with regards to the symbiote suit. Yes, this is the movie with the symbiotes, oh, and and um, and how it's affected his life. It makes him feel good, makes him feel powerful, but it essentially ruins his life. So this uh, this movie tackles that, and to its credit, so far it's the only Spider-Man movie. That has tackled uh, Spider-Man with the symbiote. I imagine they'll probably get to it at some point with uh, Tom Holland's Spider-Man, and I imagine maybe it would have came up if the Amazing Spider-Man had gone on. Uh, but uh, yeah, so far this is the only one to tackle the symbiote and how it affects uh, Peter Parker's life and uh, how it turns turns uh, him pretty much not quite evil, uh, but. Um, but pretty much brings out the darker or, uh, parts of his personality, and uh, we'll definitely get to those. But uh, but yeah, bring out like the darker parts of his personality. So struggling with that, the usual issues he has with uh, like his friendship with Harry, he uh, and his relationship with MJ, and we'll definitely get more into the relationship with MJ. But at Harry, uh, they are kind of strained because um, as we talked about in the last movie, if you haven't already, go check out that review. But as we've uh, talked about in the last movie, Harry has found out that Peter is Spider-Man, and thus, as believes that, um, thus believes that Spider-Man killed his father, or uh, Norman Osborn. Uh, but, or, uh, but they do put their differences aside in the end, especially because um, his butler Bernard uh, tells him that it was actually his father that inadvertently killed himself with his glider or as he was trying to fight Spider-Man, which Bernard, why didn't you tell him that earlier? But uh, they ultimately put their differences aside to combat uh, the new foes, it was the true main villain. So Harry's kind of like a side villain in this, but yes, this movie does have two main villains and we also have to uh, kind of talk about that. Uh, that being the Sandman and Venom, which, um, which obviously was probably a giveaway because of uh, because of the symbiote. Yes, uh, Eddie Brock is in this movie, and he does become Venom. And uh, we'll get to the work. there's a lot of things we have to uh, address, and uh, and not all of them good, unfortunately. But but um, but, uh, 
Uh, yeah, so uh, we have the Sandman and Venom here. Sandman, of course, uh, Flint and Marco. Uh, this time around, his origin being that he was uh, somewhat responsible for the death of Uncle Ben. Uh, they find out that uh, find out that uh, it was actually the uh, the other guy who killed who uh, supposedly killed Uncle Ben that Peter chased. Uh, Ace and then accidentally fell. Oh, uh, oh, was only the accomplice to Marco. Oh, uh, but it turns out uh, it was kind of the other way around. And Marco explains that he accidentally shot Uncle Ben, and so Spidey forgives him. But otherwise, I think, um, I think with Sandman they did a decent job. They didn't necessarily want to make him villainous. Uh, is um, the Sandman? The thing about Sandman is, yes, Sandman is a villain, but. He's also been depicted as, like, heroic at times, but, um, so, oh, he kind of has, like, anti-hero tendencies. He's, and I think, uh, the movie did try to explore that, uh, with him, uh, him with, um, with, uh, uh, Sandman not quite being fully villainous. He doesn't go full villain, and, and honestly, aside maybe from, like, Venom, none of really Spider-Man's villains are, like, fully villainous if you know what i mean and, and maybe the goblin and uh but the thing is with got with the green goblin norman osborn uh or not or not it was his mental state as a result of the uh formula that turned him into the green goblin the chemicals that turned him into the green goblin and then with like uh dr octopus it's because he lost control of the uh tentacles holes on his body and so they kind of controlled him and but uh but venom is like fully he villainous, uh, is, uh, but Sandman really isn't, and so, kind of having a night, having a, like, interesting dynamic there, uh, between Sandman and Ven Venom, with, uh, with Venom really being the one to take down Spider-Man, and, uh, Sandman kind of being, uh, kind of, um, kind of going along with it, for the most part, which, which, um, Hitch a um, interesting dynamic, and they do kind of try to make the multiple villain thing work uh, by having Venom kind of take more of the lead later on in the movie, and then have Sandman, who was kind of was kind of in that main villain role throughout the movie, kind of take like a back seat. But uh, all three of their like main villains, that being uh, the New Goblin, which I don't think they refer to Harry as the New Goblin uh, at all. Oh, but um, but uh, the new goblin, uh, Sandman and Venom, they kind of tried to give them all like a little slice of like that main villain pie, and um, and obviously, like I said, we'll get into it, but I don't think it quite worked out the way that they hoped it did. And I know I am kind of all over the place, but he's but uh, this movie he uh, does throw like a lot at you. And I think that's one of the reasons, uh, unfortunately, that he, why it's not looked on quite as fondly as the other movies. And one of the things that kind of, uh, in some ways, ends up being his downfall, unfortunately. Uh, but hey, but there's those aspects. We have uh, have uh, Spider-Man with the symbiote suit. Uh, with the symbiote suit, uh, is pretty much just like his regular suit, except all in black. Like it doesn't have like the big white spider like it does in the uh, in like the comics version, uh, in which, um, admittedly, is kind of uh, they still do try to define it uh, a little bit. It uh, make it like defined and uh, and uh, pretty much just like the suit except in black. But it would have been nice if they just went uh, with like the big white spider design. They and and um. Uh, I don't know, but maybe that's just me. But they did still try to have it have the detail of the regular suit, but all in black. Uh, and the spiders are like white, but they're like the normal size. But uh, that's not really like a bother of mine. But uh, that I think looks okay there. And uh, otherwise, yeah. So, oh, um, so yeah, having some of that charm. But now to get into what I didn't really like, and there's quite a few things that we need to talk about here. And I think. Uh, a lot of the reasons why people kind of regard it in such a negative light at times. Uh, for starters, hers there is the multiple villain situation. I feel like um, like um, it was noble of them um, um, uh, to try to give like the main villain role to all three, but unfortunately, they say a hey, the jack of all trade a jack of all trades is a master of none. 
and unfortunately because they try to build up all three villains at that uh, same time I'm, I'm none of them really they, they all kind of like a lot of their like main villain development feels a little bit rushed and a little bit off off now I think in theory main uh, having multiple main villains could work uh, but but it needs to be executed well a lot, hell and a lot of people will say this movie has main villain syndrome and that there's quote unquote too many villains which which on one hand wait till they get to like the sinister six but, but on the other hand I feel like with this movie that is kind of a good point because as you have to have all these villains um, you have to have all these villains to um, to build up up and so oh they kind of tried to do that they kind of tried to do like they kind of try to do everything all at once I feel like and sadly it doesn't really work out uh, the way they intended I think uh, I think uh, then uh, the other thing is uh, of course emo Peter Parker aka the source of the bully McGuire memes uh, memes um, it is a bit cringy but I think that's kind of the whole point and honestly this probably should have gone in what I like uh, liked because it is pretty funny hit but it is kind of cringy but that's the whole point I mean I think uh, people kind of misinterpret this as like Peter trying to be cool or uh, or, or uh, the movie trying to suggest Peter is now cool but I think it's the opposite because Peter's still an absolute dork it's just that now he thinks he's cool while still maintaining that dorkiness and I think and that's kind of kind of um that's kind of the message, but I can kind of see how it's misconstrued. And then speaking of which, <sighs> Mary Jane, back at it again. And uh, and the memes are at peak meme potential, but so is the uh, toxic relationship between Mary Jane and Peter Parker. Or this time around, on, uh, on uh, Spider-Man being, or Peter Parker, I should say, being Spider-Man, and, uh, and is kind of weighing on the relationship, that and that kiss with uh, Gwen Stacy, but... But, uh, yeah, so, oh, that is kind of straining the relationship, which I kind of predicted it would, uh, in, uh, last movie, he, although, I'll hope it, it briefly, he, that, and Mary Jane, um, and Peter kind of break up, Peter wants to propose to Mary Jane in this movie, that doesn't really work out, but then Harry, who, d who does lose his memory for a little bit, uh, it, uh, after hitting his head after fighting Peter, uh, does regain his memory, <laughs> He and so tries to manipulate Mary Jane into breaking up with Peter and kind of like uh, ditching him and stuff like that, at which just it's just uh, all around and uh, and yes, Peter kissing someone else when he's supposed to be with Mary Jane, yeah, that that's bad. And I'm not I'm not excusing that, but but MJ did it too. Who uh, mind you in. The original trilogy. She was going to do it with Peter last movie. She did it with Peter and Spider Man, and uh, and in the um, which yeah, Spider Man is Peter, but she she didn't know that yet. But she did it with Peter and Spider Man in the fir first movie. He uh, he obviously he yet obviously yes, turnabout is fair play, but at the same time, two wrongs don't make a right. So just this whole uh, relationship, which I think it wouldn't be as bad if they didn't and still try to make it work. Like, no, no, we, we can still try to make it work. Or, uh, because they, like, dance and embrace at the end after uh, Harry dies, which, yes, Harry does die uh, after helping Spider-Man and, and uh, taking down um, Sandman and Vel Venom. Uh, Harry does die, which, which, um, which uh, throughout the trilogy, er literally all the uh, Spider-Man villains, except for um, Sandman end up dying, which is crazy, because, uh, because, um, uh, Her uh, Peter, I should say, launches a bomb at the symbiote after removing it off Eddie, but Eddie gets wrapped back up in it, and then they both blow up, uh, which, uh, is, which is a nice, uh, nod to the two, uh, weaknesses of the symbiote, that being sound, on as Peter was in the, um, was in the church with the bell, oh, and fire, or, uh, with the bomb and everything, uh, but, uh, yeah, so, oh, Harry does die, uh, after being stabbed by his own glider by Venom, which, uh, nice parallels, and this movie does have quite a few parallels, uh, with other stuff we've seen, uh, throughout the trilogy, which I think, uh, not only nice callbacks, but some nice continuity at times, 
Anyways, but yeah, so oh, after that, uh, Peter and MJ still have a dance, even though, oh, at fir even though initially Peter, while going through his emo stuff, other than while being broken up, tries to make MJ jealous with Gwen, who realizes it, and she's uh, and uh, she's upset that she was essentially being used to make uh, MJ jealous, and then Peter gets kicked out for fighting uh, some of the staff at the. Um, at the he uh at the uh, cafe where MJ works, her she's kicked off Broadway because they didn't really uh, like her um they didn't really like her act unfortunately, uh but he but they do dance there which it's honestly a lot of this relationship if if we did have to try and salvage it I don't think we probably should but if they try to salvage it it like communication and I'm, I know I'm kind of treating this like a real relationship obviously these two characters are fictional but like like a lack of communication and like like uh Peter or not really knowing what's going on with MJ MJ not really knowing what's going on with Peter MJ confiding in Harry he uh he uh, instead of Peter and then that leads to those actions and then Peter not really confiding in anybody about his problems leading to his actions just just toxic all around just it just ended off at this point, you two. Ended off like the, like the nice uh, next door lady of his uh, landlord was literally right there, which is what a lot of people were saying, <coughs> saying uh, about uh, uh, throughout this trilogy. But uh, yeah, uh, he should just went with her instead. She she even made him cookies. <laughs> he's he's uh, he's with nuts as he requested. But uh, yeah, so that is Spider-Man three. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, retrospective coming probably next week. Talking about what went right and what went wrong with the trilogy. Yeah, uh, go. Ho what? Uh, hope you guys are staying tuned for that. Uh, and uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like, uh, comment, subscribe. Hey, do all that. Or I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. <laughs> but anyway, I. Uh, hey, uh, but for real, if you did enjoy this video, please do me a favor. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Share with your friends. Turn on post notifications so you know every time I upload a video so you can see as soon as it drops. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on the movie and my review of the movie. Did you like to like the movie? Did you like to like my review of the movie? Let me know. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you guys later. Peace.